We all know that IAM is super critical in securing our AWS environments and AWS provides a lot of flexibility, tools and best practices to define roles, policies, MFAs and many more security related configurations. And our job is to make sure we utilize these tools and best practices to secure our uh, AWS environments. So in this video, we'll take a closer look at IAM Passroll and how we can use it to secure access to our uh, AWS resources. Hello folks, if you're new to the channel, I'm Prasad Domala and I'm a senior cloud architect and DevOps engineer. And on this channel, I'll be uh, sharing my knowledge and experience on AWS cloud and DevOps, providing tips and tricks to help you navigate this uh, powerful platform. So let's dive in. If you have worked enough on AWS, you might already know that as a security best practice, we should provide users only the permissions for the actions they are allowed to perform. So this is often called as principle of uh, least privilege. And this principle is even more important when you authorize uh, an IAM user to execute code through another service like Lambda or EC2 instance. So to demonstrate this IAM pass role, let's start with creating an IAM user called EC2 admin with full EC2 access, allowing him to perform all actions on uh, EC2 service. I'm using CDK here and I've uh, already initialized an empty uh, CDK project and I'm using uh, TypeScript as my uh, CDK programming language. And I won't be talking much about CDK in this video as it is out of scope. Check out my other videos on CDK if you want to know how to get started with CDK and I'll put the links in the description. Let me first add code to create uh, this EC2 admin and then now uh, fix the imports. As you can see, EC2 admin has uh, EC2 full access manage policy attached. And I'm also setting a password for this uh, IAM user from uh, SSM. This is not the best way to uh, set passwords, but for this demo, this should be fine uh, for us to be able to log into uh, AWS console and do some permissions uh, testing. Let me quickly deploy this uh, using CDK deploy. As you can see, the deployment is now complete and our stack is created. If we uh, quickly check our AWS console, we have our uh, EC2 admin user and we have Amazon EC2 full access manage policy attached to this uh, user. In a separate window, let's log into AWS console using this uh, new IAM user. Now let me try to create uh, EC2 instance using EC2 admin uh, permissions. So I'll go to launch instance and then I'll scroll down to the advanced section and try to select uh, IAM instance profile. I get an error saying I'm not authorized to perform list instance profiles, which is expected because uh, we didn't provide any IAM permissions to this user. If we don't attach IAM instance profile, we should be able to launch the instance without any issues. Let's say I'll give it a name uh, instance one and select a key pair and I'll leave the rest of the details as is and then click on launch instance. As you can see, we were able to launch the instance successfully. Now let's add IAM permissions uh, to our EC2 admin user. Going back to my CDK project, let me add an inline policy with IAM list instance uh, profiles action. Here we are just adding IAM list uh, instance profiles action to our uh, EC2 admin user. Now let's uh, deploy this. The stack is now uh, deployed. Let's quickly check the IAM permissions for our EC2 admin user. So if you go back to our um, IAM console and refresh here, we should be able to see a new policy. And we have for IAM list instance uh, profiles action. Let's go back to our uh, other tab and try to launch another instance. So I'll go to launch instances. This time I'll call it as uh, instance two and then select my uh, key pair. And from the advanced section, I'll try to select the instance profile. I'll select EC2 role and I'm leaving rest of the defaults as is and click on launch instance. Now we get another permissions uh, error. It's not actually telling me what permissions are missing. It just gives me a, an encoded authorization failure message and we can decode that encoded string and find out the actual permission error using AWS CLI. So let me copy this uh, encoded message first. 
And from my uh, terminal here, I'm using AWS STS decode authorization uh, message uh, CLI command. And I've pasted in the encoded message for the encoded message uh, option. This will uh, give us the error message in uh, JSON format. Let me copy this uh, JSON message and sanitize it uh, in VS Code. Now we can see the formatted uh, JSON object. If we take a closer look at this object, we see that uh, the action we are trying to perform is uh, IAM pass role and on the resource uh, EC2 role. So this basically means that the EC2 run instance action failed when we are uh, launching an EC2 instance with EC2 role attached to it because we don't have IAM pass role uh, permissions. So this is where uh, IAM pass role permission comes into picture. Now let's add pass role permission to our EC2 admin. So here I'm adding a pass role permission on a specific role, which is EC2 hyphen role in our case. So let's deploy this uh, quickly. Going back to my console, let me select a retry fail task. Now our uh, launch instance action is uh, successful. We can even restrict access using uh, conditions. Say for example, if we want to allow this EC2 admin user to pass our EC2 role only to EC2 instances, we can do so by adding a condition, which looks like this. So this makes sure that EC2 admin can pass this role only to EC2 instances and not uh, any other AWS services like uh, Lambda, for example. You can apply the same type of uh, permissions for different IAM users or groups or roles to pass specific roles to other AWS services like Lambda, CloudFormation, and many more uh, supported uh, AWS services. So that's how IAM pass role is used to allow other services assume a particular role to perform AWS API actions. Now let me quickly go through a couple of considerations and caveats while using uh, pass role permissions. When you attach an IAM role to services like EC2 instance or a Lambda function, anyone who has access to those resources will inherit the permissions from that uh, attached role. In other words, any user who has uh, say SSH access to the EC2 instance with an instance profile can perform all the actions that instance uh, profile permits. So you need to assume that all your SSH users will have those permissions defined in the EC2 role. So this is important because you might end up providing more AWS access than required to your SSH users or Lambda users. So which defies the whole purpose of this principle of least privilege. Also, if your SSH keys are compromised, the attacker can not only access the instance, but also all AWS API actions defined in the instance profile attached to that instance. Another important thing is that the role attached to these services is passed implicitly which means the service doesn't make uh, STS assume role action to assume this role. So in other words, uh, pass role is just a permission, not an API action. And by definition, it's not logged to CloudTrail, which logs only API actions. So this makes it hard to audit uh, pass role permissions. And there are ways to extract this uh, information about uh, which service is using which role to perform a specific action, but it's not uh, straightforward. And this makes IAM pass role hard to uh, audit. So whenever you're giving pass role permissions, keep those uh, points in mind and build uh, secure AWS environments. So that's all for this uh, video. Thanks for watching. I hope uh, you found this video informative and helpful. And remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more AWS related uh, content and uh, updates. Also check out my other videos on this channel for even more in-depth uh, AWS cloud content. Thanks again and see you in the next one.